Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for being tuned in to Beam Television as we do our daily devotionals. And we've been doing a, a series here on God moves in a mysterious way. Nicodemus said to Jesus, he said, no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Knowing that there had to be divine intervention, knowing that God does things in our lives that show himself to be real or there's no other way to describe it but other than a miracle. I tell the stories about how God has done miraculous works in my life and my family's life where we've seen the hand of God. I grew up in a church where we had a powerful preacher by the name of Willie Ford. My pastor, Pastor Ford, was a man of miracles, signs and wonders, and he believed in the working of God. And other people might have known him and know, knew of faults, flaws and failures in his life. But one thing I knew for sure, he was a man that prayed. He didn't walk around like I'm the big almighty. He walked around to say, look, I know an almighty God. And I, I've had other pastors that I've known great men of God that, that have always talked to me about God. I think of Brother Cochran, Dr. Cochran here in Phoenix City, who always talks faith. I, I've got many uh, other great men of God, David Howe, friends of mine that always talk to me about having faith in God. In other words, it's like the scripture says, being like a tree planted by the rivers of water that shall not be moved. And what do you mean by that? Meaning that God made the tree and God put the roots in the tree, but the transcendent God is bigger than anything. I've had Elder Warren Brown who taught me things about prayer and he let me know that as I walked in faith, as I walked in the abundance of God, as I walked and abided in God, that God would do more for me as I abided in him and waited in prayer. Well, when you're looking at the miraculous ways of God and the mysterious ways of God, one thing you need to know, and I mentioned it in in the last devotional, I didn't do as good of it as I wanted to because I was a little hurried. But uh, scripture, it says in Second Peter, well, First Peter, actually, First Peter chapter uh, one, it says, as being born again, not of corruptible, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Now, he says that we're born again. And that's what Jesus said to Nicodemus. He said to Nick, Nick, you got to be born again. Being born again doesn't mean you're perfect. Being born again doesn't mean you're sinless. What, what being born again means that the one who made the creation decided to do a new work in your heart, and it was so miraculous that he changed the way that you were. And you can't tell me that you could just change yourself on your own. It was not a New Year's resolution that made your life different. It was the Spirit of God that stepped down in your life and transformed the way that you looked at things, the way that you saw them. He put a new set of glances on your eyes that you looked at the world differently. You saw things and you saw the hand of God. You could look at the world and see the blood of Jesus. You could see the power of God. You could see the light of God. You could see the situations change, you would know that there was no limit to God and that all things were possible to you if you believe. Now, it's important to know that because that's called liberty. When you have the liberty in the spirit, you're no longer under the bondage of sin or up under the bondage of the things that go on in the world. You need to know that although you're in the world, you're not of the world. That the world is not the thing that dictates your life, but that your life is fulfilled in the walking and the working of Christ Jesus and that his works are done best in your life when you're humble when you bow your heads and say, God, I can't control this situation, but you can. Lord, I'm not able to do it, but you build me up. Lord, I'm too high. Tear me down. Make me, shape me. Make me a new person. Let me be a sheep that hears your voice and let me follow you. I heard a preacher say that when he, when he leads me, I'll follow, and what he feeds me, I will swallow. You've got to know it with the inside of yourself that there's nothing good about you, but everything is good in God. And when God is good in your life, his compassion is there. When God is good in your life, his peace is there. When God is good in your life, you can sleep at night, not because of you, but because God is the one who controls your rest. And Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you R-E-S-T, rest, meaning that I will make it so that then you are resting from the cares of this world. You're resting from the trials of this world. You're resting from the things that go on that trouble the hearts of many other people and make them anxious. I cannot be anxious by the things that go on in the world around me. Oh, it might trouble me on this side. I might get in distress on that side. But one thing I know, that eventually my heart will get turned back unto the Lord. Eventually God will turn me back to him. Eventually God will turn you back to him. Eventually God will strengthen you where you're weak. And then he'll fortify your faith and he'll build you up and let you know that nothing happens by chance or by circumstances. But that through it all, that God is there to make you, to build you, to straighten you out. And he'll 
yourself, make it so that then that everything that you do, because the Bible says tribulations work, patience, patience, experience and experience, hope and hope makes us not ashamed because the love of God is in our hearts. What is in your heart? The power working of God. What is in your heart? The peace of God. What is in your heart? The compassion of God. What is in your heart? The patience of God. What is in your heart? Faith in God. What is in your heart? Uh, compassion, peace, kindness, grace, temperance, gentleness, meekness and faith. Whew. That's when you know you've been changed because it's not you that's governing your heart, but it's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envying as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that they may grow. So if you taste it, that the Lord is gracious. I like the way David said in the Old Testament, he said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I believe that's Psalm 34. <clears throat> Let me look and see, and we'll see if that's it. Because that's one of those ones that jumps out at you. And, and if you read it and hear it and you say, wait a minute, was that for me? Where he says, let me find it. Yeah, there it is. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And blessed is the man that trusts in him. Psalms 34 and 8. Aren't you glad that you can taste God? You can feel God. You can see him. You can know God, that God's very working works are in you, and it gives you peace like you never known. He gives you strength that you couldn't produce on your own. He provides for you. I'm so glad that God will give you a vision that he will always bring your provisions your way. And nothing, I mean, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And anything that happens in your life, you need to know that the providential God is there. Not only is the providential God is there, but he's working miracles for you. Yes, he is. And I'm not talking about getting a Cadillac. I'm not talking about getting a Mercedes Benz, a Maserati, a, a Lamborghini, or none of that. I'm not talking about getting a big house, but I'm talking about having an inward house, not built by the hands of man. And an inward peace, not built by the hands of man, not based on things, but having a peace inside of your insides to know that the same God that was with me through my tests, the same God that was with me through my trials, the same God that was with me through my pain is able to sustain me and keep me and fortify me. And then I will go about doing good things in his name. And when you're doing good things in the name of the Lord, everything else comes back your way. You come to the point that you start saying, yes, I've escaped the world. I've escaped the cares of the world. I love it when I've read books about great men who achieved and, and amassed great wealth. And then they said that the one thing they wanted to do, instead of them worrying about their wealth and having intimacy with money, they had intimacy with God. And as much as that money they had, they wanted to share it. They wanted to spread it. They wanted to give it to somebody. They wanted to help somebody. When I was a little boy, I never forget my grandmama gave me this song. And then I had a teacher named Miss Freddie Talley. And, and, and Miss, Miss Talley sang, uh, made me learn this song. If I can help somebody, and, 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 I, and I believe that was the song I sang when I messed up at Dawson Elementary. It says, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can tell somebody he is traveling wrong, my living shall not be in vain. My living shall not be in vain. My living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I pass along, my living shall not be in vain. Oh, I'm so glad that when I realize that I'm walking in the marvelous light and you're walking in the marvelous light and the light is not because of us. It's not because we're good that we're walking in the light, but we walk in the light because he chose us to be part of the light. You say, where is that in the Bible? John chapter 15, verse 13. And he says in there and I got to find it. I'm just telling you, I'm quoting it as it comes to me. But I just want you to see this. I believe it is 15 and 13 it, where Jesus says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Well, I was wrong. It wasn't 15, 13, 15 and 13. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I say. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth. But I call you friends for all things I've made, and you've heard of the Father I've made known in you. You have not chosen me. It's the 16th verse. I was only three verses off. 
You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whosoever and whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. What Jesus says is you're chosen and you're chosen so that then you can bring about the fruits of God's love. Not because you're good, but because God is good and God puts his love in you and then you quit being judgmental. You quit being forthright like you're the only one right. You start then having compassion on people and loving them anyway. You say, well, I'm not hurt that way. Well, Jesus, the Bible says that he hung around uh, harlots and publicans. And, you know, you say, wait a minute. What do you mean? Harlots and publicans. Yeah, he hung around people that were not good. He hung with the tax collectors. He hung with people that was bad. He went to uh, uh, Zachariah's house in Luke 19. And he was there, and everybody thought Zacchaeus. I said Zachariah, Zacchaeus' house. And they said, wait a minute, this man's a notorious sinner. What is he doing there? But salvation had come to Zacchaeus' house. Salvation comes to your house and my house. I've been around some people that were not so great, but they had good hearts. I've been around people that did wrong, but still God was able to bless them. I've been around people that sold dope and told me that, Marcus, I was at the traffic light, or I was, at, I was in traffic, and that was a, a bus going on. But then... That, that, that a problem came up in my life. My mom was sick and I told the Lord, Lord, if you just get me through, through this uh, uh, traffic stop here, this, this drug stop, I'll quit selling drugs. And said that, that when he got up, that the car right before him, they stopped the, the, the traffic, the, 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 uh, the search. One reason they stopped, they stopped, you know, because they got a call to go somewhere else. Well, here's the victory. That man stopped selling drugs that day because he was able to get home. He said, Lord, I got all these drugs in my car. As soon as I get all this mess away from me, he said, I'm going to tell the people I'm not selling drugs no more because I'm going to follow you. That's how it is. You say that God did that? Yes, he did. I've, said, I've had people who told me all kinds of stories that when they were in the jail, God delivered them. I, my son got shot four times in the chest, and then somehow the miraculous way it went, hit him in the lungs. He got shot by. 40 caliber, you know, pop out, pop out, both lungs, both chest, you know, sides of his chest. And he was supposed to have died insulin. No, he's alive because God's mercy is uh, real. And his, his miracle work in his miracle work and power intervened in the situation. And I'm so glad that God hears and answers prayers. I can tell you more stories how God healed me of cancer. I can tell you how that I've seen God do all kinds of things through prayer, not because we're good, but because God is good. Any church that's around here, any preacher, any preacher man or preacher woman ought to be to tell you God changed them. And that there should be a point that they see growth in their life and no longer the reflection of the world, which is darkness, but the reflection of God's light that comes alive in their heart, making them so that then they become the light of the world and the salt of the earth. We are the light. We are the salt. Can you bow your heads with me in a word of prayer? We thank God. Father, we thank you, dear God, for your word and for your miraculous working in our lives. We pray, God, that we might be a light Lord, in this world, and your strength might be made perfect in our weakness, Lord, that all things that we do, Lord, that they might avail in the ways that you would have them to be. Let us see that we're not perfect, but thank God we've got the incorruptible seed in our heart that makes us a new person. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Beam Television. We'll have another devotional for you. My name is Marcus Hammers, and we love you. God bless you.